Good afternoon. I'm Ernie Bauer, the Senior Advisor and Director of the Southeast Asia Program and the Pacific Partners Initiative, which focuses on Australia, New Zealand, and the South Pacific. And we're very fortunate here today to have John McKinnon, the, uh, the Secretary of the Ministry of Defense of New Zealand. Thank you for joining us, John. Thank you, Ernie. Appreciate you coming. Very pleased to be here. You're here in Washington in part for uh, a strategic dialogue with the State Department and, and other U.S. agencies. Mm. Could you tell us a little bit uh, what's the nature of that discussion and, and um, what you talked about? Yeah. We, we set this up following the Wellington Declaration, which was signed by Secretary Clinton and our Foreign right. Minister, Mr. McCulley, in November 2010. And it gives us an opportunity to talk about a range of issues, whether in the Asia-Pacific region or more broadly, where New Zealand and the United States have common interests or common concerns. So it was a good discussion, a very good format, and we hope to continue to do that. The, the talks involved you and a senior counterpart from the trade and economic side. So we're combining security and political issues with the trade and economic issues, is that right? Yes, we, we're partners with the United States and a number of organizations, APEC, the East Asia Summit, and part of that agenda is the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is a, you know, an initiative to free up trade amongst nine countries. So we were able to discuss issues relating to that, also security issues, uh, issues relating to counterterrorism, proliferation and the like. So it was wide ranging and, and very useful. You mentioned earlier the Wellington Declaration. Yeah. Um, many observers think that was a sort of a new benchmark in, mm. uh, in the US-New Zealand relationship. Mm. Would you agree, where, where are the US-New Zealand uh, ties headed and, uh, and what's your perspective from a security perspective? Well, I think the Wellington Declaration uh, signaled a, a new phase in that relationship. We're now um, cooperating together across a whole range of uh, activities, whether that's to do with climate change, to do with uh, areas in the South Pacific where we both, where we both operate. Of course, we also um, have forces together in Afghanistan. Uh, there's a very wide range of interactions now between the United States and New Zealand, as, as good as it's ever been. Hmm. The, uh, in terms of uh, the US New Zealand are, are sitting together in Asian regional architecture, mm. um, what's New Zealand's perspective on some of this, the new developing architecture, the East Asia Summit, the mm. ASEAN Defence Ministers meeting? Yeah. I think there have been some really positive developments because we now have a number of structures which bring together um, the key uh, players, the key uh, people who participate in the region, particularly with the uh, ASEAN Defence Ministers Meeting Plus. That for the first time has brought together defence ministers and, and, and defence officials and defence force people from across the region, the United States, China, the countries of ASEAN of course who are the hosts ourselves, Australia, and, and others. So that's a, that's a new forum, but I think it's a very, making a very valuable contribution to uh, regional, regional security. The United States and China, of course, you know, I think everyone in the region seems to be concerned about that relationship and, and making sure that it goes well. Um, but the South China Sea has uh, certainly focused attention, at least here in Washington, mm -hmm. on uh, the potential for um, disputes and, and mm -hmm. uh, What's New Zealand's perspective on the U.S.-China relationship and the and areas such as the South China Sea? Mm. Well, perhaps if I just say on the <coughs> South China Sea, I mean, we, we you know there are a number of claimants there who have uh, claims to various islands in that region. Mm. We don't take a position on on those particular territorial claims. We just we just want and urge all parties to resolve them in accordance with international law and, and the law of the sea and uh, you know we, we, we're pleased that progress can be made in, in, in that way. Uh, we have uh, obviously a very good relationship with the United States. China is a very important um, economic partner for us, one of our big trading partners and uh, we of course like all the countries of the region are keen that the United States and China can, uh, can manage their relations productively and constructively. New Zealand is a major trading nation and, and you depend on maritime access mm. to, to get your exports and, and bring your, your imports in. Um, in the defense, 2010 uh, defense white paper, you lay out some, mm. uh, some new strategies mm. for uh, New Zealand's uh, defense thinking. Could you uh, talk about some of the highlights of, of that defense yeah. strategy? There are a couple of key elements. I mean, the, the primary one is that our main region in which we undertake defense activities is clearly our neighborhood, the, the South Pacific, but we're talking there about an area which stretches from the equator to Antarctica. So 
that's a big area to deploy forces in and we have to be able to make sure that we can sustain and, and project them there. But beyond that, we have an interest in, uh, in maritime security, of course. So we have deployed uh, our ships into Southeast Asia off the Horn of Africa. And, and that's a way of saying, yes, we recognise that these issues can affect our security as much as those closer to home. And we remain engaged uh, in the international community for that reason. Mm. And you mentioned the South Pacific. Mm. It's an area where New Zealand is, uh, has, has a great presence. Mm. And uh, we just talked to the Fijian ambassador uh, a couple weeks ago, and, and he mentioned that uh, New Zealand plays a con particularly constructive role. Mm. Uh, and I think we hear that from other mm. island nations. Um, what, what more would you like to see the United States do when it comes to the South Pacific? Uh, I think there's a lot of areas where already um, we're cooperating. For instance, we have just recently, uh, you and we have been helping with uh, water supply in yes. some of the islands which have been uh, deeply affected in a variety of ways by natural uh, pressures and natural disasters. And I think the areas which are important to the Pacific, such as human resource development, infrastructure, uh, the effects of climate change. Those are areas where I think we can cooperate very effectively with you and we would be very keen. And I think many of the Pacific countries would be keen to see an increased uh, United States presence. Right. New Zealand's a good friend of the United States and, and we, we should ask friends for advice um, as we sort of shift our focus, uh, the pivot or the, the rebalancing, whatever you care to call it, mm. uh, that the Obama administration has announced on, on Asia. Uh, any advice for us as we proceed down that path? Well, we don't normally give advice to other governments, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, I think from your own uh, forays into the region, I think you'll find that there's uh, a recognition that the United States presence in the region is, is very constructive and people will welcome uh, wel welcome that, that rebalancing. Um, Secretary McKinnon, thanks for joining us at CSIS today. Thank you very much, Ian. Thank you. Good to be here. Welcome.